most members of Gen Z, which includes those born between 1995 and 2015, have graduated into a recession, and they could find themselves on the same financial path as older millennials who are expected to be the first generation worse off financially than their parents. James D. Virgilio, a fiduciary investor, joins me live via Skype to share some moves Gen Z can make to set themselves up for financial security in the long run. Welcome to the show, James. Thanks for having me. I have a son in this age group that you're talking about, so I, I'm going to use some of the tips that you give us. You know, if the job market is bad right now, is this a good time for Gen Z to go back to school or go to school and get that graduate degree? That really all depends on the financials. You know, oftentimes people get a graduate degree only to graduate and not be able to get a job that pays enough uh, to cover that graduate degree. A simple rule of thumb is if you're going to go to graduate school, you need to be able to earn coming out of school what it costs you to borrow going into school. If you follow that rule, then grad school can be a good idea. That's some good advice. Would you recommend home ownership to Gen Z as an investment strategy? Uh, is renting just a waste of money at this point? I wouldn't recommend home ownership as an investment strategy to anyone if we're talking about owning the home you live in. Now, if you're owning a home to rent it out, that's a viable investment strategy. But the residential home you live in is, in fact, not an investment strategy. It will not make you money. Uh, most often, you'll actually wind up losing more than 10% a year by owning a home. Renting will also cost you money. It's best to view home ownership or home rental as something that's going to cost you money rather than make you money. Okay. When should Gen Z start saving for retirement? It seems so far away with this age group. And, and if so, how much should they be saving? Really, the rule of thumb is the same for everyone. As soon as you start making an income, a real income, a consistent income of any kind, you should save 10% of your gross. So that's before taxes. If you're making $50,000, save $5,000 each and every year and invest that. And that will allow you to replicate your standard of living uh, when you retire. Okay, so a lot of, uh, I call them kids because they're my kids. Can you use apps to manage retirement accounts? This age group uses a lot of apps or do you need to go to a financial planner? You certainly can use apps, but apps are like a tool and just like anything else, the tool is only as good as the person operating it. Uh, the reason any of us would seek advice in any field is to hopefully better our result. So if you're not a professional or you're not extremely competent in your financial planning or investment management, it is best to seek help. Otherwise, you have the tool, but not the knowledge. So should I refer my son to our financial advisor or should I have him find his own? I think it would be great if you can get a multi-generational setup with a financial advisor. Ideally, you want to make sure that financial advisor is a fiduciary or someone who has your and your children's best interests at heart with regards to all things they do for you. That's both financial planning and investment management. There is truly no reason to have separate financial advisors. Find someone who has a legal interest to do what's best for you and stick with them. Okay, hopefully my son will listen to me. Uh, as we're wrapping it up, uh, tell us where viewers out there can go for more information. You can find more information on my website, cddwealth.com, and there's a plethora of articles, tips, tricks, and strategies to better manage your wealth. Thanks so much for joining us today. Great advice for Gen Z. Thank you so much.